All right. So here we are. Uh, I will be vanishing here very shortly. Um, we'll see who shows up to the chat. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping out of the gate. What's up, addicts? Um, we are not going to have any streams next week at all. Uh, we're going to take the week off. Uh, no misfit lounge addicts is going to be on vacation. Um, I'm working on some stuff for the following week because kind of consider everything we've done so far as season one. Um, and then, you know, a brand new season two starts, uh, in a couple of weeks. So ought to be interesting. Um, be a whole new look and whatnot. Uh, also too, just to let you guys know, uh, in case you are not aware sometime tomorrow, um, we will be having all of this actually, uh, going up to the different podcast sites. It'll be, um, on, uh, Apple podcast, Spotify, anchor. Um, if you have an Amazon Alexa, you can ask to listen to it. It'll be there as well. So lots of cool stuff. And, um, you know, as we go forward, I'm hoping to change the format just a little bit, um, have more guests on those seem to be doing very, very well. Uh, and actually the audio podcast is doing pretty good over the past few weeks with having proto rage on and having uh, Chris on from the drugstore business. So some cool stuff there, but having said that tonight, we have Jill of all trades. Iron Maiden, Mad Dog, and a new addition to the family, Velvikins. Um, you're going to have basically two managers and two hourly associates. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. This isn't scripted. This is all theirs. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away here and let these ladies have the command center. And then it is their show. So I'll be monitoring in the chat as well as addicts. If we've got anybody new here. Uh, hit like, subscribe, all that other stuff, ask questions, show the ladies some support, and we are good to go. So, uh, Maiden, you there? I am here. Mad Dog, you there? I'm here. All right. I'm going to step away a second. Hello, Irish Connection. This ought to be a good one. I'll be in the chat here in just a minute. All right. And here come the ladies. Good evening, everyone. Hello. So we thought that we would start off with just asking um, each other questions that we got off online and um, going through and seeing everybody's different opinions. All good with that, ladies? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So um, with all of these questions, um, it's if you were to start your own retail chain, um, not taking into account what you're selling, just anything, um, what type of normal corporate policies would you choose to implement and why? And the first one, which has been something discussed on um, a lot of the podcasts so far, is about exchange and returns and what you feel your policy would be and if you would follow your policy if you even had one. Mad Dog, you wanna start off? I can. Um, I think for me, I mean, where I'm at now, we have a very short time frame for returns. I'd probably do the 60 day return period. But my thing is, is like, there's, there's always going to be that customer. There's always going to be the exception to the rule. And I think for me, and this is going to sound real soft coming from me, for the most part, it's going to be take care of the customer because, you know, it, it's, I had a customer one day who brought something back that I know she did not buy from my store, but she had a receipt and she had the box. And I did not want to return it, but my boss said, take care of the customer. So I, I told her, I said, well, I can't do, I can't give you any money back, but I can do an exchange. So the, unfortunately, there's always going to be those exceptions to the rules. So having those hard and fast set in stone rules, I don't think that's ever going to work. I, I just don't. But I think 
the 30 day return period is a little short. That's a complaint that I get a lot. So you were saying yeah. more like a 60 day return policy and yeah. like have the receipt so they can prove it's been 60 days. Yeah. I mean, you know, but again, there's always going to be those exceptions. And like I had again, one the other day, um, I know the lady bought it at Christmas, but is it worth the call to corporate? Is it worth the bad press? Well, the is good news worth- is in this situation, you would be corporate. Right. But again, then that goes back to the bad press yeah. because, you know, that old adage of the squeaky wheel gets the grease, you know, the ones who are upset are the ones that yell the loudest. So again, I know she bought it at Christmas. She didn't have a receipt. I told her, I said, I'm not giving you any money back, but you're more than welcome to do an exchange, but you have to spend what this is worth. I'm not giving, there's no store credit. There's none of that. You just have to spend it. Okay. Maiden, how about you? Well, I kind of agree with mad dog on that because I think a 30 day return policy sometimes is a little, it's a little like short window for some people. And I understand. Cause like, I know me personally, I am the world's worst when it comes to bringing stuff back um, at all. So But I think the biggest thing for me, no ticket, no receipt, no tag, it shouldn't be returned. Because that was something that I dealt with a lot at my last job. People would bring things in, clearly washed, like clearly worn, things that weren't from our store at all. No ticket, no receipt, nothing to prove that it was from there. And, but going back to what Mad Dog said, it was never you have to kind of pick and choose your battles. And sometimes it's just not worth saying no. And you just have to do what you have to do to keep the customer happy. But I have been places that do have stricter return policies than other places that I've worked. And it seems like, I don't know if it's because the customers that shop there are aware of their return policy, but it seems like they have people more aware that they can't just return anything. And I could totally be wrong about that. That's just what I've observed. But in my opinion, if you don't have any proof of purchase for anything, saying that you bought it from even this chain of stores, then it shouldn't be returned. I, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, my, my viewpoint is you need to have your receipt saying that you got this from my store if you want my money. Um, exactly. Really I, and really, 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 I understand the pain of saying, no, we can't return that. And then they ask to speak to the manager and the manager's like, here, we'll return it. And then they look at you like, you were just lying to me. Ha ha. Yeah. Yeah, ha-ha. exactly. And, and, um, I've, I've worked at places before where it was a strict return policy. If you didn't have the receipt, then that was just too bad. And I've actually worked at places where there was no refund. When you bought it, it was yours. Congratulations. And that was yeah. it. And people knew that. And you, uh, that particular place, I worked as a cashier for like mm, maybe a year and then had maybe two customers total in that whole year that ever wanted to return something because they knew too bad. And I think uh, part of the problem is like right now, there's a lot of placating to the customer um you know and give them what they want give them what they want and so they act a fool and they take advantage of it and yeah you're you're right no refund i'm sorry (laughs) you know well when brick and mortar stores are competing with the online with the amazons i mean even with you know shopping online at walmart like a lot of times that's not from Walmart and they'll just, they'll take it back, you ship it back, you get your money back. So I think due to the increase in the online shopping and the alternatives to brick and mortar stores, we have to become more flexible to, because it's real easy for them to say, well, just forget it. I'm going to go shop online now. Because if there is an issue, I can return it. It gets put back on my card. 
So we do have to, to be a little bit more flexible and, you know, change with the times a little bit because the, the decor store that scary and I worked at when it was its previous life, there was no returns at all. No exchanges, no returns. They didn't care if you had a receipt. Didn't matter. Once it was your, like you said a minute ago, once it was yours, congratulations, it's yours. But times are changing. And Velvicans, what about you? I feel like if you were to have a policy that you shouldn't be able to return something that you've already bought, it would probably be better. Because some people just bring things back that they bought um, just to say that they bought it there, but it's from somewhere else. And sometimes when they're talking to a customer service person, instead of like a store manager, a store manager would probably give it back to them just to say that they're doing the right thing. Instead of telling the customer, hey, you didn't get this from me. So that leads the customers to believe they, that they should get everything back like all the cash that they spent, even if they haven't bought it there. So I feel like having a no return policy would probably be better than letting them return whatever they bought. Okay. And with that, I mean, like, if you had your own company, you're not necessarily going to be as big as Amazon to where you can take a hit on, okay, I'll take this back. And let's face it, Amazon sells almost everything. So, you know, if they take something back that somebody didn't buy from them, okay, they can still turn around and sell it. Whereas, I don't know, if you worked at the little blue box store and somebody brought you a little red box and wanted to return it, you're not really going to be able to turn around and sell that back to someone. <laughs> so I guess it does depend kind of on what you are and aren't selling. Okay, next question was, would you use secret shoppers and I'm going to go ahead and answer on that because I feel like using secret shoppers that are just customers coming in um not necessarily knowing the business having their own expectations not knowing how that particular company works um aren't really good at evaluating it uh, it would be much better, I think, to have, I guess, maybe a corporate person, um, which I realize that I'm probably about to describe what a district manager is supposed to be. <laughs> but let's face it, when a district manager comes, everybody kind of fakes things. Whereas if you had a secret shopper that went to every single blue box store, and wasn't expecting red box store stuff, they were expecting blue box store stuff, then you would get a better reading on if your store was performing like your blue box store should perform. And Velvicans, you went last last time, you wanna go now? Sure, okay. Um, what was the question again? Um, would you shopper. use secret shoppers? Yeah. I would personally not use a secret shopper considering like at all at all no district managers are better um because a lot of customers they'll find anything to complain about so they could see something minor and be like oh hey i don't like this just because and they don't know what's supposed to go where how everything's supposed to look so they'll just find anything to complain about and i guess we could just call them karens <laughs> and okay. that's it okay <laughs> Maiden? See, I, I'm kind of conflicted about that because right off the top of my head, I would say no. However, I think that sometimes a secret shopper could be beneficial because as managers, you can't be in every area of your store all the time. And sometimes it is, I think it would be nice to have a perspective from a customer's point of view or like a secret shopper's point of view to see some things that are maybe going on that you're not aware of. However, going back to what Velvican said, like, I think that in my experience, secret shoppers kind of overanalyze and pick apart every little small detail without having any background about 
the store or the company itself. Yeah, it's so, like going in and saying, how many things can I find wrong to fill out on my little report? Yeah, and I, I kind of feel like I, I have known people that have done like secret shopping like here and there. And it's from what I hear, it's they kind of like go to places not to give them good marks and see how well they're doing. They want to know the things that you're not doing and what you're doing wrong and what doesn't look good and what your customer service is lacking on. So I'm going to have to land on no. I would not want secret shoppers. Okay. And I noticed in the chat, Addix is saying that he was a secret shopper before. Um, and that he's asking how about having another associate from another store come in for that. I think that that would be a good idea. That's kind of like what I was saying. Um, you know, have somebody that knows what your particular store is supposed to look like. And so that way, you know, they know, are you doing things the way you should be doing them or not? Uh, Mad Dog, your turn. I am probably going to be in the minority on this. And I'm going to say, yes, I would like secret shoppers because... Now, I, I guess for me, it would depend on what the scope of their, their particular survey looks like. But, I mean, I want to know, because... <clears throat> well, it's your company, so you can choose what, what you want your secret shoppers looking you know, at. When, when I'm there, yeah, my people are doing what they need to be doing. But, like, currently, if I'm off or I was sick for four days and was out, stuff didn't really go the way it needed to go. So from a customer perspective, what I want to know is, were you greeted when they came in? If you needed help, did somebody help you? Or were they standing up at the cash register, chit-chatting, leaning on the counter, on their phone, you know, just not paying attention? Were the bathrooms clean? Okay, maybe, you know, the clothing might, the sizing of my clothing might have been a little bit off, but was it all hanging up and there wasn't stuff on the floor? Like that's the kind of thing that I would want to know from a customer perspective and it versus a DM perspective where they're the ones that are going to come in and nitpick. Well, your planogram and automotive is not correct. You don't have every single little sign up, but from a customer perspective, were you treated with respect? Could you easily shop the store and find things. Yes, there may have been a sign missing. You might have not have known a price, but was there someone there to assist you? That's what I want to know, not the DM perspective of, well, you should have had three pallets done in the last hour. Okay, yeah, but you know what? We've had customers, we've been busy, so we didn't get to it. I want to know the real perspective, not the analytical perspective. So yeah. I think I'm in the number Well, with that, I wasn't really saying. I wasn't really saying that have your DM do your secret shopping. I was saying have like, you know, a corporate person that comes around and looks. Not necessarily well, a DM, but funny enough. Or um, like like out like Attic said, you know, having, you know, somebody that works for that company that knows what it's supposed to be, you know, versus well, just someone well, off the street. Actually, funny enough today, my boss just walked in and I had no clue he was coming today. That's and I, I was pushing freight and he walked in and he was greeted because I have new cashiers who don't know who he is. He was greeted. The store was in decent shape considering I'm extremely understaffed and I was out for four days last week. So, you know, that was very nice. And then he walked in my back room and he was like, when did you get your truck? And I was like, this morning. And he said, how many do you have left? You know, how many did you get? And I was like, 25. And I was sitting on eight left. So he was like, man, y'all, you know, y'all are really rocking it. So there was honestly no anticipation of him coming in. We had no clue he was going to stop in. So that was kind of nice too, you know, to be kind of recognized for the things that we're going through and the store still holding itself together. Congratulations. Okay, the next question actually was about um, greeting customers. It's, um, would you have sort of like Walmart greeters at the door, just saying hello to everybody that comes through the doorway? Um, would you do like a welcome to burritos, <laughs> a massive hello? 
or say hello to anyone within a few feet like most stores have to do or just do the whole you know fluid speak when you're spoken to go ahead mad dog um just going off of you know what i've got going on right now and where i'm at right now i mean i want to speak to them you know even if even if i'm on register bringing up a customer and i have a moment and i see them walk in maybe they get their cart blah 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 it's just a hey how are you there's no like i i don't ever want to be like one of the uh people who you know, at the furniture stores who are working commission, who are like up your rear end as soon as you walk in the door, what are you looking for? What do you need? How much you want to spend? Nothing like that. Just a quick acknowledgement that they've walked into the building, a welcoming thing. And then as I'm walking through the store, like if I'm going to the restroom and I pass somebody, I say, Hey there, how are you? And I, but I don't stop. Like it's just kind of in passing, but just more of an acknowledgement that they're there. So, you know, we, tr we try to do both and I do like it. And I actually had somebody tell me uh, the other day that um, it feels really nice just to be acknowledged when they come in. Okay, so. Publicans, how about you? How do you feel? Um, considering I worked in customer service up at cashier for about three years, I've liked greeting customers. But then again, sometimes it gets tiring saying the same thing over again because then you can tell mm -hmm. when... Um, you don't feel like you don't have the emotions. You just say it to say it. Like, I don't mind saying hello. And sometimes it does make their day. And I would just say, not like with greeters or anything, just if they walk up to you or if you're making eye contact with someone, I would be like, hey, how are you? How's your day going? Like, maybe that. But that's about it. Maiden, how about you? So I don't think I would want anybody, like, I wouldn't want, like, a Moe's welcome. Like, I wouldn't want people, like, yelling at me when I walked in the store. Me, personally, like, when I shop, I don't, I don't expect to walk into a store and have somebody like, hey, how are you? Like, welcome to wherever today. Um, but there is something to be said about just having somebody come into the store and whoever is kind of, like, in, like, whoever sees that customer first, in my opinion, should just give them, like, a quick, hi, how are you doing? you know, today and acknowledge them coming into the store. Um, but I wouldn't have like a greeter or anything like that necessarily. I've been in the situation where I've had all four of these, <laughs> um, not at the same, not at the same location, but I've been at four different locations that all that use one of these and the, you know, welcome to burritos for the particular situation that I was in, that kind of worked until we got just so busy that you could barely keep up. And then it was a pain in the butt and you didn't want to do it. And everybody realized you didn't want to do it. And it was mostly like, hey, welcome coming the hell in, get the hell out <laughs> by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, me personally, I think that having like the Walmart greeters would be good twofold um, because you have them greeting people as they come in, but you also have them making sure that people don't push shopping carts full of stuff they didn't buy that aren't even in shopping bags with no receipt out your door. Um, especially if you have a store that says you have to have a receipt to do a return, <laughs> that'd be good to have, in my opinion. Um, as far as the 10 foot rule and saying you absolutely have to speak to anyone that's like within 10 feet of you. If you're up on a ladder hanging signs or something like that, I don't want to have to stop what I'm doing to look at you in the face and be like, Hey, how are you doing? Can I show you where the bathroom is? I want you to find someone that probably isn't up a ladder <laughs> to ask them where the restroom is, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And you know, as I said before, I don't like asking associates to do something that I wouldn't do myself. So even if I was to be a corporate person, I wouldn't want to ask associates to do something that I wouldn't want to do myself. So if it's organic and, you know, you're used to saying hey to people, great. But making it mandatory that you actually speak to them? No, I don't think so. But I think, for like, for me, because it, it is something very natural for me. Yeah. It is something 
very, um, you know, like I said, I could just be walking to the bathroom or walking to receiving and I might see somebody that's just kind of has a confused look on their face. Hey, honey, you find everything okay? Number one, I am Southern. So honey, baby, sugar, whatever, it, it comes with the territory. Um, you know, hey, honey, you find everything okay? And ha- most time they'll turn around. But again, I'm not stopping. I might slow down, but I'm not, I don't stop. It's, it's a keep trucking unless they say, oh, wait, can you blah, 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 blah. And I think for me, modeling those behaviors for my staff is very important because I, you know, like you said, you don't expect anybody to do something that you're not comfortable with. But if they, you know, if I can model a behavior where it is very fluid, it is very natural it's not you literally walk up to the person, stop, turn around, get in their face. Are you finding everything okay? Are you finding everything okay? You know, it helps. So. True, true. And like, to be honest with me, it's very, it's very fluid, especially at like my current job. I don't have a problem saying, you know, hey, how are you today to people? Like, that happens a lot, actually, <laughs> every five minutes. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, making it mandatory that you need to speak to people, not so much. And also, I feel like if you don't make them have to speak to every single person, that might be okay, unless you see someone wandering around with, like, a list in their hand, you know, obviously needing help. You should speak to that person, and you should help them. Um but i personally don't like the point oh it's over there or just go to aisle 10 or you know that sort of deal i can't be bothered i feel like if somebody does come to you and ask you for help you know unless it is going to the restroom i'm not going to offer to take someone to the restroom let's be honest i'll tell you it's it's in the back. In the corner. You don't, you don't want yeah. to walk. Let me take your hand. I'll escort you. To I'm, the I'm, not, I'm not going to hold your hand back there to it. Um, but, you know, if they're looking for something, I will say, hey, it's it's over here on aisle 10. Do you want me to take you over there to it? And if they do, okay, fine, I will. And if they don't, okay, they didn't. But just pointing and being like, it's over there. You see that thing hanging from the ceiling, walk past it three feet. Yeah, no, that's not for me. I mean, I've only had to really do that. Like, say, for example, I'm on, you know, two person coverage and the other person's in the bathroom and I'm on register. I can't walk them to the back of the building. I can't, I, I can't leave the front, you know, so that's really, you know, and my boss is big on when you're pointing to something, there's three fingers pointing back to you, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, but, you know, unless it's a situation where I'm like, I really can't leave from up here, but I can explain to you where it is. You know, you know, I do. And I will apologize. I'm sorry. I'm the only one up here right now. But if you go X, Y, Z, it's going to be down on the left hand side. Um, but I, I think for me. And maybe that's because this is because basically everywhere I've ever worked, I've worn a uniform so that all of the associates look the same. So for me, greeting an associate, greeting a customer Maybe if they have a question, they know who to come look for. Hey, okay. So you see, you see who I am. You see what I look like. So if you have a question, you know who to come ask. Understandable. So. Okay. Um, next question. Um, cart corrals outside versus the Aldi rent a cart method. And if y'all aren't, for some reason, aware of the Aldi rent a cart method. At Aldi, you go and their carts are all connected together. You put a corner, a quarter in the slot. It disconnects the shopping cart from all the other shopping carts. You do your shopping. And then when you return the shopping cart yourself to where the shopping carts are, the quarter comes out, you get it back. You rented the cart versus having the cart corrals that let's face it, usually end up being all over the place in your parking lot. And Velvicans, you can go first. Um, considering how many carts you see that are stray in the parking lot at the stores that you go to, that they're everywhere. Like I've had a couple carts hit my car 
and I don't really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I think rent a car method is better than just having cars flying everywhere and with people hitting them or them going out onto like the road into like major roads. That's kind of scary. So I appreciate the rent a cart method. I agree. I think that whoever came up with that with Aldi is kind of genius. Um, because especially where I'm currently employed and really, to be honest, other places I've been employed too. nobody ever wants to go get the carts out in the rain or in, you know, the heat of the southern summer sun, you know, and they just, it, it's always an issue. Whereas with that, that minimizes it because people will... People will do the right thing and put their carts back just to get their quarter back. Maiden, how do you feel about it? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Aldi's is like legit cornering the market on the whole like quarter cart thing. Because for one, like I shop at Aldi's and yeah, like I know to bring a quarter and I know that I'm going to get my quarter back. And working at a place that doesn't have that. Our store manager literally, like, people will take shopping carts and, like, just take them to, like, a different town. It's, like, the craziest shit I've ever seen. Like, literally, our store manager would have to, like, go and, like, get carts from, like, down the road with his truck. Because people would just, I don't know what they do with them. I mean, I don't know what the logic behind, like, taking a shopping cart, like, a half a mile down the road is. But all these, I mean, honestly, whoever, I don't know how more stores don't already do that because it's genius true agreed mad dog yeah i i need that where i'm at so bad right can we all just agree I have, I have a huge homeless population and i went to the gas station that's across a major five lane road from where i'm at and there's like seven of them behind their dumpster back there but i don't have any way to get them and i'm surely not walking them across the street it's not going to be a thing, but you know, and not only that, but people driving through parking lots have zero respect when they see somebody pushing a lot of carts into a building. Yeah. Like oh, that's the truth. That is the truth. <laughs> all of a sudden stop the 10 carts going down a hill. Cause my, my building is at the bottom of a hill at a, in my parking lot. And they just come flying through there. I know you see my fat ass. I know you do. <laughs> like, and and you just you just you just not gonna stop. Okay. Yeah, I because I think also the price that we have to pay to replace them would would be well worth investing the money to put whatever coin system on it. Well, I can say, like, probably Velvicans can back me up, too. At at my, the place I currently work, the amount of payroll that they spend just on having people go get carts is a lot. Because all day long, carts, 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 carts. That's carts. all you hear over the intercom. Yeah. That's same. Right. Over the intercom. All go you get hear carts. is, go get carts, get <laughs> carts, carts. In the chat, we have Mr. Scary saying, plus it keeps homeless people from taking them and also keeps people from stealing them to sell them for scrap. Yes, that's true. Well, another thing, too, to get carts, like I know where I worked, I didn't have like a set budget for somebody to go get carts. So you're literally having to take somebody off of your sales floor or off of your front end to send them out there or the manager themselves is having to go out there and not be in the building. And it's just... Well, yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of, you know, you're wasting resources on something that seems like if we, if everybody did this, would have, like, an easier solution. Yeah, and I think, like, people would know, hey, I need to keep a quarter in my pocket because most places I'm going to go is going to have this, you know? Um, in the chat, also, Russell says, when I worked at Save-A-Lot, one day a week, our DM would travel the streets to go get carts. Uh, Mr. Scary also says, at Dollar Tree, we have these huge poles to keep people from taking them at the door. That was a fail. They would just lean the cart backwards. At Burlington. Several in... people actually talking about the poles on the carts. <laughs> at Burlington in Orlando, we had the locking mechanism 
on the wheel. So if you got so far away from the front door, it locks up on you. I mean, it was an anti-theft thing, but also like the city of Orlando has an ordinance about shopping carts. So if you're a homeless person and you're caught with a shopping cart, you go to jail. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because that's a big deal in Orlando. So, you know, as soon as you hit that certain spot, that thing locks up on you. And if you're like, if they're running and I've seen this and it's hysterical, if they're running and that cart locks up, I've seen people flip over the cart because (laughs) they're still going so fast. It's hysterical to watch, but yeah, that's amazing. (laughs) It's great. And that, but then you have to have the stupid little thing and you have to walk up to it and unlock it. And half the time you can't find those things. You know, so then that just becomes more of a hassle because people want to steal those because it's a generic thing and it can unlock any of them. Yeah. Okay. Now more kind of employee stuff, I think. Uh, Employee uniforms versus a dress code versus just wear their own clothes and how we feel about that. Me personally, I've worked at a place where you were allowed to wear your own clothes. There wasn't like a dress code per se, but people really struggled with knowing the difference between something that's appropriate to wear to your place of employment and something that's appropriate to wear to the club when you want to advertise that you want to have a booty call. (laughs) (laughs) So... Having said that, I think having, you know, either a dress code, I I think that having like, if you have just like polos that everyone's supposed to wear, I mean, especially if you provide them to them, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Um, I think it's kind of ridiculous. A lot of places that think that you should wear khakis and polos because Especially if you're stalking and on your knees and climbing stuff, you are going to rip those khakis and have to buy more and rip those khakis and have to buy more. And I think it makes more sense to just say, wear jeans with no holes that aren't around your ankles and this polo. Have a nice day. Um, Mad Dog, your thoughts? Yeah, that I, I'm 100% for that because I don't. You know, I don't know if anybody's been in Walmart lately. I'm sure you have, but Walmart has reverted. When I, when I worked there, it, we had a dress code. We had a navy shirt, and it could be any navy shirt. It could be a t-shirt, button-up, polo, whatever, and khaki bottoms. And now it's just you know wear whatever you want. And so what I'm seeing is a lot of times you'll see that they have their lanyard around their neck, so you know that they work there. But because they're in street clothes or they're not as identifiable, they try to hide from customers that way. Yeah. And Burlington, we had a dress code when I worked there. And now they've reverted to you can wear whatever you want. And it's the same thing. They're they're They try. They spend more of their day trying to blend in and camouflage themselves as a regular person than even putting forth the effort to just help somebody. So you don't have that recognition of, yes, I work here. How can I help you? Which is not a good thing in a customer service oriented field. So, yeah, we we need to look alike. We need to stand out for the customer. Yeah, agreed. True. Uh, Velvicans. Um, at first I was like, no, I don't think we should have a dress code. But then I thought about it a little bit. And if customers don't see you with your clothes, then of course they're not going to realize it. They'll just think you're just some random person in there. So I do agree with the work shirt. But I like jeans. And I like the idea of just wearing jeans at work with your work shirt, as long as they're not charging you for a shirt. Because occasionally some people charge like $10 a shirt. And sometimes I don't have $10 to get for a shirt because I'm just here to work. Like, I come here to work, and I feel like I should be able to have a free t-shirt if I need one, just in case I have holes, which is, it happens. But I do think it's... Yeah, I like I like the company I'm in now. We provide it. Yeah. We, we provide the, the work shirt. And with us, you know, it's, you know, jeans, whatever you're comfortable in. Jeans, khaki, black pants. You can do capris. I wear skirts. 
I'll wear some shorts if I know somebody's not coming, but not like booty shorts, like to my knee, old lady walking shorts. But you know, because it is, it's hot. You know, sure. it gets hot. You know, and I don't want anybody to be miserable. But you know, no, I don't want to see your leggings. No TikTok leggings. No holes in anything. Like, let's still have a little bit of decorum. But yes, and your work shirt, which I give when the person gets hired. I order them as needed. They do get, they get stained. They get bleach on them from washing them. They get ripped. I keep a stash in the office. So yes, if you want me to wear a uniform shirt, I need you to provide it for me. True. So I, I feel you on that one. A hundred percent. Now where you're at now, how do they feel about like the person that, Oh, I forgot my shirt. I need a new one. Oh, I forgot my shirt. I need a new one. Like repeatedly. Um, not so much how they feel about it. It's that I'm like, you're an adult and I need you to, um, be a little bit more responsible. So, but they actually do have a two shirt limit, but I kind of break that one up a little bit because I have people that I schedule five days a week. Not everybody has a washer and dryer. They might have to go to the laundry mat. So, you know, I might over, over a period of time, I might sneak a couple more shirts in there to them, but it's not tracked. You know, and like my polo, like management wears polos, associates wear t-shirts. My polos are crap, being honest. I mean, every time I lean up against my counter, they get picked up because they're that really awful, like polyester. And I'm like, I can't, management's only supposed to have three shirts. I'm like, y'all are crazy. (laughs) Y'all are insane. So I, every month I put in a shirt order. Well, here's the fun thing. Currently, where I'm employed, the managers have to wear button-up white shirts. Oh, yeah, the white shirts. <laughs> and I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> so I'm sorry, sorry oh, cuz yeah. you sneeze and all of a sudden there's a stain on your white shirt. <laughs> yeah, no, I think thankfully our black. Thankfully. Yeah. Um in the chat this Russell says if they provide the dress shirt, then I find it reasonable, but don't charge me $25 for my shirt. Um, Scary says agreed on not charging for a shirt. Russell says don't give me a shirt for a bonus or a that a boy. And then no. Addicts wants to know more about TikTok leggings, but we'll just pass on over that. Sorry, Addicts. Addicts. <laughs> and Maiden, it's your turn. <laughs> I need you to put it on that. <laughs> Well, I agree. I mean, there's got to be a dress code. I mean, I've worked places where there's been, you know, quote, a dress code, but it was very laxed. And basically it was, you can wear jeans, just don't wear a t-shirt that's got like graphics, you know, that or that says like something, you know, crazy on it. But people like, in my experience, like the associates like really try to push the limit on that. And they'll come in and be like, oh, well, this is like, you know, I didn't have time to go home and change. So To have some type of uniform, or I don't know if you want to call it a uniform, but yeah, to have, okay, you could wear jeans, you have to wear a black polo, and we're going to give that to you, because to be real, like, to be honest, if you're expecting somebody to wear, like, a certain type of thing to work, to work there, then yeah, the company should be the one providing that to you, and you shouldn't have to pay for it. Well, you know, when, when Scary and I worked for the decor store, it, it was supposed to be a very specific named shade of gray polo. But if you wanted to buy it through the company, they were like 20 bucks a piece. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's crazy. Insanity. So like, I just stumbled upon it. Like right after I got hired, I went to a random Walmart in Anderson and found gray polos for $3. And I was like, you know what? These are just going to have to work. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I haven't worked in, because when I got that job, I hadn't worked in about six weeks. And I was like, I can't go fork out, you know, 60 bucks for three shirts. No. Mr. Scary says at Guitar Center, we got shirts for taking training modules. I have about 100. I don't know. That's a good idea, though. Because number one, it ensures that the training gets done. And number two, it provides you with your uniform. True. That's not a bad idea. You know, it's actually a, that's actually a really good idea. It well, is. I worked at Krispy Kreme when I was 16, my first job. And 
the, that's the, a whole kind other of, episode. We have questions. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was wild. Um, do but, you ever, do you ever like put your mouth under the spigot, <laughs> dude? What? <laughs> yeah, burn my face off. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but well, the the thing about Krispy Kreme that I actually liked was that they had like three or four different like style of like t-shirts that you could wear. They were like different colors, but they all said like the same thing on it. So you would get like, you know, I think three t-shirts when you started and you could just like rotate through those. And it was great. Like even me as like a degenerate 16 year old, I knew if I had to work after school, I just throw my t-shirt in my car and I have my work uniform and it was great. So things like that, I think are kind of nice. Like if, even if like companies had like, t-shirts or polos that they can give out that like had the company logo on it i mean it would be so much easier to identify people that work there well and the, where i'm where i'm currently at they really got on us over the winter about people wearing like jackets and sweaters and i'm like well number one these people need to eat a sandwich because they're all skinny and cold all the time and number two you want us to keep the doors open because they didn't want anybody touching the door handles because of COVID. So they finally got us some long sleeve t-shirts with the company logo and sent those to employees. So, you know, again, they're still giving them to them, but we had to come up with a solution. The company that I work for, you can actually get hoodies, but you have to, you have to buy them if you want to get the hoodie. Yeah, they also not- run so small. <laughs> they do. So you, you request one and then it's horrific. It doesn't fit. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um okay you scans versus having all registers how do you feel about that maiden i mean i personally i mean i guess it depends i mean i like you scan i mean when i go into a store and shop i usually will pick that before i pick well I I usually will do that before I actually go to a register because in my experience around here, not a lot of places have cashiers staffed where it's enough to keep up with the volume of people they're trying to check out. So sometimes the U-Scan is easier. Um, But I don't think that if it were my company that I would go to just U-Scan only. I would still have cashiers at my front end. Okay. Um, I think that having the mix is good. Uh, that way you have people, I feel like Uscan has kind of replaced the whole express lane. I might be dating myself, but, um, there used to be express lanes or the 10 items or less lane, you know, and yeah, to where people were not paying attention to that at all. And it seems like Uscan is the new express lane. Although, don't get me wrong, there are people that will come with a whole entire cart full of stuff and be like, gonna go through the you scan. And those are the ones, really, you gotta watch because usually they're trying to sneak and not scan stuff and just put it in the bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Well, and it's, too, like, if you work at a very high-volume place and somebody is just trying to come in and buy one thing and they're waiting in this long ass line because you only have enough payroll to have two cashiers, it would be nice to have a U scan that way this, you know, a handful of people can just go buy their stuff real quick and get out. Pelicans? Personally, I like U scan because I used to run it. And even though it does get busy sometimes, like during the holidays and I used to run it and sometimes it would just like stop working depending because they were really old in the store that I was at the time. Oh yeah. And so they stopped all the time, but I liked it. I liked being there, even though it was overwhelming sometimes. And I got to talk to people and I got to move at a fast pace on there to pay attention to what the customers are doing. But seeing as like people who work at Walmart and their use scans, cause I've shopped there a couple of times. And when you go there and you scan things and you set them on the scale, usually it doesn't weigh them, but where the store that we work at, if you scan something and you don't put it down, it lets you know that someone hasn't put it down. Or if you take it out of the bag, you know that. And that is the difference between some of the U-scans. Like Walmart, you won't even know. And you could just put something in the bag or you cannot scan it at all and you couldn't even tell. Or Walmart, I've noticed, like, you'll go to scan and it'll say that it's paging for someone to come help you. And that person's standing around talking to someone else. And you're like, hey... <laughs> 
Over here, could you help me a little bit? True. Um, and Mad Dog. Um, I think it depends on the size of the business. Um, if I was opening my own company, I would not want that because I think that's where, I think that's where retail is losing customers because they're losing that, that connection. I think sometimes you scans can be very institutional feeling, um, and they're not paying attention, you know, and when you're waiting over there because something didn't scan the correct price and you're trying to get somebody's attention and they're on their cell phone or whatever the situation is, I think it's just very, um, I think it's very cold. And for me, that's not something that I would ever be interested in implementing in a business. All right, Irish has a question for us. It is, would you give employee discounts? And Scary backs that up with, with and would the employee discount be worth it? So, Maiden, what do you think? I would absolutely offer an employee discount. And, yeah, I would try to make it worth it. Um, the last place I worked, it was a 10% discount, um, which basically covered sales tax, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me. It wasn't really worth it. Um, but I would at least do like a minimum, like 20 or 30% employee discount because I mean, I, I, I want to take care of my associates and there should be some type of benefit to working here other than just your paycheck. So yes, I would definitely do employee discounts. Velvicans? I feel like we do need a discount. Because where we work, we don't get a discount unless it's on holiday or something special like a year, another year that you've been there. And I feel like it would be much better if you had a discount, even though you have things that are on sale on the ad. But discounts are probably much, much better. Yeah, I've, I've worked at places that um, even if they didn't give you discounts at their store, like there's been places that around the holidays, they're like, hey, here's a visa card with cash on it based on how many hours you worked the past year. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that was great, especially at the holidays, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, Russell says at the tree, we got a big 10% off on our employee appreciation day. Um, mad dog. Oh yeah. I'm all for an employee discount. Oh, love it. I mean, at the decor store, it was 25%. Granted, a lot of that stuff was way more expensive than it needed to be. Where I'm currently at is 20. And it's, and it's good. It's good. I mean, you know, even just if you wanted to buy a soda, you know, 20 ounce soda, you get 20% off. You get 20% off of the sale prices. So when it's 75% off and then you get your discount on top of that, like you really do get some good deals. We do have a rule. And this is probably something that I would implement in my own business is that new freight or new product has to be out on the floor for 24 hours before an associate can buy it. Because you do have to give the customer the chance to buy it at full price before you get to use your discount. And I think that's fair. I actually do. And usually I still get what I want anyway. <laughs> yeah, I worked at a craft store before that there was a big issue there because people would see, see stuff that they liked and not put it out. It would stay in a box in the back until it went on sale and there was a coupon and maybe even went clearance sometimes with the Christmas stuff. And the customer never got the opportunity to buy it full price, to be honest. Like, yeah. if it was something yeah. neat, y'all ain't going to see it. <laughs> Yeah, it has to be on the floor for 24 is the little is the little slogan on the floor for 24 before we can buy it, which I'm like, OK, because I'm working. Yeah, 107,000 hours a week anyway, so I'm always there, so I'm still going to see it. <laughs> OK, next no. one is kind of a hot topic. Oh, did y'all have something else to say? No, OK, we're going to go. Cell phones. 
would you allow your associates to have their cell phones? I'm going to go ahead and answer with this one. Um, I had a previous employer that they had what they called on stage and off stage. And if you are allowed to have your cell phone on silent on you, but if you needed to look at it for more than just a second to see who was calling you or who was texting you, you better take yourself off stage where no customers were going to see you. They would have had a cow if somebody stood there and answered a phone call. Now, um, at the time that I worked with them, my children were very young. And so, yes, I wanted to have my phone in case the daycare called and needed something. Um, but I understood the fact that, hey, if they call, I can press the answer button. I can let the daycare know, hey, if you call me and you don't hear anything and it stops ringing, I've answered. I've got to get myself away where people can't see. And I see a lot now of people just being on their cell phones, no matter who's around. I've actually gone shopping at the grocery store and had the girls standing there talking on the phone to someone and like, oh, I've got to ring somebody up now. Oh. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, well, just call me back in five minutes. She doesn't have much stuff. Oh and when I tell you that my inner Karen was invoked, my inner Karen was invoked. I wanted to give her a whole lecture, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> but I really, really wanted to. <laughs> so, um, can, uh, Velvikins. I feel um, like there's a time and a place for a phone. Um, even though I'm kind of young and I use my phone, but I don't have my phone out when there's a customer around me. I don't sit there with my phone out talking to somebody on the phone while someone's standing there. I feel like they need help. Why would you stay on your phone not showing any interest? I mean, you're here for a reason. You're on the clock for a reason. You're yeah. getting paid. So why are you on your phone unless I, you really need it? I feel like if you have enough time to stand there and Snapchat someone, then um, you need a box to open and put out or something. Oh, yeah. You have enough time to do something. <laughs> Mad dog. Oh, that's going to be an absolutely not. That is probably one of the strictest rules I would ever have. I'm not doing this. I'm not playing this game of, well, you can have it on you, but it has to be on silent. No, you can give the sore phone because in like where I'm at now, I have seven cordless phones around my building somewhere. So if somebody needs somebody, they can call the store because what happens is, and it's, it, it kind of goes back to the dress code thing. They push the limit. They push the limit. They push the limit. Oh, well, that was my daycare. I can't, I can't prove that. But the bottom line is if your daycare really needs you that bad, call on the store phone. Seriously. Well, because in my situation, the particular place that I was, it, you, you couldn't call the place of business and get through to me. Like, right immediately but, like I mean, you'd call you'd call and get rerouted to someone that may or may not even be in the same building I was so oh yeah no <laughs> see where I'm at currently I mean you know you call I, I still have landlines yeah I still have ported phones so I mean you know smaller no you don't you don't need it because again what's happening is when when your eyes are not on them at all times they're out they're leaning on the counter. They're on Facebook. They're sending text messages. They're video chatting people. And if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. And there's always something that needs to be cleaned. So that that would probably be. And even to the point, like we, our policy is our managers are supposed to have their phones on them. I'm to the point where I don't want my managers having their phones on them because they're not doing. You know, if I'm on the phone, it's probably because my boss has called, or another store leader has called. Or another, you know, whatever. It's about work. It's, I don't like enough people to talk to anybody during the day. <laughs> so, you know, but my managers, they're texting their boyfriends and doing, no, no, no. And I see in the chat where people are talking about customers being on their phones. I am a firm believer that I will stand there and stare at you until you're ready for me to help you. I Ooh. have done it. <laughs> and then like. Okay, are we oh, ready? Are we ready now? Because I'm not going to play this game of I rang up everything and now you want to tell me that, oh, that didn't ring up right and this didn't ring up right because you were on your phone and not paying attention. I don't play that game. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am the one that will speak very loudly to them while they're on the phone because I feel like since I don't have both their ears, I have to talk louder so they can hear me. And (laughs) then they put their phone down. Oh, are you ready to check out? Oh, this is such a pretty color. My mama gets so mad at me because she'll be on the phone with me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fixing to check out. I will hold on. And I will put the phone away and be like, I'm so sorry. And she'll be like, they don't care. I'm like, I care. Right. Me. It's kind of disrespectful sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I hate like working in customer service. Like you literally could be talking to somebody. They're not even paying attention. You make eye contact with the person. And you're like, hey, how are you? And they look at you like you're stupid. And I'm like, well, that was a waste of hello. <laughs> like, no, because, because you know what? Turnabout is fair play. Long. You treat people how you want to be treated. If you want to come into a business and you want to be acknowledged and be recognized and get the help, then you need to be just as respectful to the person that's helping you. We're not Agreed. certain. We well, are I think not certain. I think a lot of. I think a lot of retail more so has been dedicated to, hey, customers, be respectful of the person that's helping you. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Irish asked a good question. Theft. Would you keep a closer eye on customers or employees? They're all sketchy. <laughs> They're all sketchy. You'll watch all of them. Yeah, all of them. You can't Across the board. <laughs> I everybody. Feel, everybody. I, I feel like it seems like, and y'all can interject if y'all don't feel that way, but it seems to me like companies seem to worry more about employee theft than customer theft. And if they actually paid attention, the customers are robbing them blind. True. Right. But see, that's built in. This is what I was told. External theft is built in where they're, where LP is making their money is on the internal. Theft is theft. If you're taking mm-hmm. something and not paying for it, you stole. So yep. it doesn't matter if you're a yep. customer or an employee. What if you're an employee off the clock? Then you're a customer. You stole. Yeah, but, but they still have your social security number and all your information because <laughs> They have you on file. Well, nowadays and you can look them up they, on Facebook and be like, "Hey, look!" And that's how you get your prosecutions. Is when you have when you have their birth date and you have all of that stuff. That's when you get your prosecute prosecutions because you have it on camera and you can prove it and you have all their information. With an external theft, yeah, you might have it on camera, but because you don't know who they are, and I mean, you can ask scary. I mean, when they would come to the decor store, they would literally take the tags off their cars. So that you couldn't see the tags That's in crazy. camera. Mm-hmm. To be oh, honest, yeah. like, um, like I literally watched these two guys come into the store once. They stuffed Don dish detergent and all the other stuff in their pants. And they did that for a whole, like, maybe five minutes. No one did anything. They let them walk out the door. Right. There, yep. There's actually a gentleman... Um, at the place that I work, um, I have more than once now been in the parking lot off the clock (laughs) and seen him come out with a little, uh, one of the shopping baskets full of beer. (laughs) Like every day, I think he is stealing beer from this store and they don't care. And I'm like, but I'm telling you, if he walks in the door, he's going back to where the beer is and he's going to take as much beer as he can fit in that little basket and walk out the door with it. And if nothing else, it's very suspect to see someone walking out with a hand basket that has stuff in it that's not in any bags, but they, they, they don't care because he's a customer. That's crazy. I, I don't think it's so much that they don't care. Is that it's literally not worth it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's literally not worth it because, you know, if it, anytime, you know, when you do inventories and you do these things, I mean, your shrink is built in. That's why there's the variance. So when you, when you have your inventories and they say, okay, you can be no more than, you know, plus or minus five either way that that's built in, that's your shrink and it's built in. But when, but normally when you come to employee theft, nine times out of 10, that's cash theft, not merchandise, it's cash, 
with your fraudulent returns and with just, you know, slipping money out of the register. And because that area is so heavily monitored that they get, they have way more proof of that because when you have an external theft, they're going to say, well, there, we did not have them on camera solid. So if at any point in time, they were not visible on camera, you can't prove a thing. Yeah. And it's all built in. Well, Irish says corporate thinks it's employees because they can keep a closer watch on them so it's easier to catch them. And then Correct. Terry points out a lot of states are upping the amount of money total of theft that they have to take in order to be prosecuted. So, for instance, Correct. in San Francisco, they have to steal nine hundred over $900 before the police will respond. I mean, Correct. let's walk into Walmart and see what size TV we want, right? Right. I do not condone that. Nobody listening to the podcast, please do not go steal from Walmart TV. <laughs> um, okay, we'll try to blow through these real quick because it's already after nine o'clock. Um, training policy. Do you start out with everyone learning how to do register and your normal stocking protocols, or do you only train for specific areas? Mad Dog, how do you feel about that? I'm gonna train specific areas first. Because I have an associate, he's not he he's not going to be on register. He's just not. So I'm not going to focus on that. Do I have to eventually train him? Absolutely. Am I? Is that my focus? Absolutely not. I need to play to his, his strengths. Okay. Personally, I think well for that situation, I see that. But personally, I think it's beneficial to have everyone know the basics. So that way, let's say I don't know the stomach flu goes through your store and you got a bunch of stock guys and you don't have a bunch of cashiers, your stock guys can still ring people up and vice versa. If you know your stock guys don't show up or ladies, stock ladies too, but stock people don't show up, then you can have, you know, other people that go out to the floor. And then, you know, you say mad dog, if you've got time to lean, you got time to clean. I, I say, you know, once the cleaning's done, uh, you should be able to put up stuff too and put it up where it's supposed to go, especially with go backs. If you teach people how things are supposed to be stocked, then they know how to do their go backs as well. Absolutely. But I still, I personally, and even now with where I'm at now, we all do everything. So yeah. everybody processes spray, everybody puts up shipment. But if I know, you know, Sally over here, is mainly going to be on register that I'm mainly going to train her on register. Does she need to know where everything goes? Absolutely. But I'm going to mainly train her on her area because that's where I need her to be the most proficient. And then if I got Billy Joe Bob over here, who is mainly going to stock, I'm not worried about the front end with him. I want him to get proficient at what his main job is. Cause being honest I, right now, I don't have anybody. So all of my cashiers are my managers and myself. So <laughs> we're yeah. the ones doing that. Part of the day. Maiden, real quick, how you feel? I would train by area. So I actually, it's kind of funny. The last place that I worked, um, whenever we did our onboarding, they had a training policy that everybody had to learn everything. And it was like a two week long training process. And to be honest, around the holidays, when you're trying to hire people to do a specific job, to me, it's not worth hiring somebody to unload a truck and then having them go through a two-week training, learning everything else in the store when they're not going to be doing that. Because for one, I don't have the time for that. I don't have the payroll for that. And I've actually lost people in the process because they would come on and say, well, I thought I was being hired for this job. Well, yeah, but it's our training policy that you have to learn. Every and like we got audited for that too. So if an auditor came in, and saw that we onboarded somebody in the last, you know, 60 days and they didn't go through all of these training modules for the different areas, we would get dinged for that. And I didn't think that was fair because if you need me to hire somebody to do a specific job and they're not going to be bringing customers up and they're not going to be, you know, merchandising in my ladies department, then I don't see it's like a waste of time to have them go through all of that when I can just teach them to do the job they are going to do and to do that well. Okay, and Velvicans. I understand what you're saying when you um, say that they shouldn't 
not everyone should be trained on the same thing all the time. I get that because some people don't have the payroll for it. But it could be helpful sometimes, but I agree with that because not everybody's going to want to run a register. Some people hate running register, and it is good to have separation between departments or being a cashier, even though it is very helpful if you're out of people, which considering a lot of people are low of um, workers and labor, so I get that. Either one could be fine. Okay, um, breaks. Do you have strict 30-minute breaks, or do you give like a 5 to 10-minute wiggle room window? Velvicans. 5 to 10 minute. I, I like that because I take that at work. It helps out because like when it's like gets really stressful and the people really stress you out, sometimes it it's better. But sometimes 30 minute is okay too. Maiden? I mean, I would be fine with either. Um, I think like Velvican said, it's nice to sometimes have that five to 10 minute wiggle room because, you know, shit happens. And, you know, if you're set to like a strict, you know, you only get 30 minutes. I mean, sometimes that's not realistic, especially if it's really busy or there's something going on. So I would be open to either one, to be honest. Mad dog. I got to go with strict on it because again, they are going to push the limits of everything. So if you're giving them five to 10 minutes of wiggle room and they know this, then it's going to become every day, five, 10 minutes wiggle room. And what the part that, that they don't see that management sees is I'm waiting on you to come back. So this person can go because that person's got to leave and I got to pull their drawer. And I, it's it's got to be just black and white. I personally, I like giving the five to 10 minute wiggle room, especially um, because where I'm currently working, like if you go get something to eat, you might not make it back in enough time to get your food and come back and eat all at the same time. I've worked in a situation like when I worked for the bank, when I tell you it was so strict, if you were helping a customer and you were not going to be able to go the moment you were scheduled for break. You better let somebody know because somebody else needed to go at that moment because they micromanaged so much that they told you a person needs to be on break for this 30 minute window, for this 30 minute window, for this 30 minute window. And there was no overlap, no wiggle room. And it, it, it was hell. Nobody ever really wanted to go to lunch because it was such a freaking nightmare because it's like, okay, you have to take people that are standing in line, but you don't know what they're coming in for. You know, they might just be cashing a check that takes like two minutes or they might be cashing a check and asking 50 questions about things and you didn't know and you didn't have any control of that, but they didn't care if you were scheduled to go to lunch at 1135 and you went at 1136, you got written up. And, and that was crazy to me. It is crazy. <clears throat> okay. Um, would you have ads, coupons, loyalty rewards, any of those, or would you just try having the best possible prices? Maiden. I would try just to have the best possible prices. Okay. Velvicans. Um, sometimes I feel like the ads and stuff that they put on the papers is a little stressful considering it changes every week on a certain day. And if you work in a certain department, say produce or something, you have to change that ad every week. And sometimes it gets a little stressful, especially when your manager's like, oh, this needs to be done, but she doesn't tell you how it needs to be done correctly. So it could be stressful with an ad. And sometimes I like the fact that anything could, could just go on sale without it having to, um, be changed anywhere as long as you know that there's a sale and if you know that there's a sale and you have signs out there it shouldn't really matter what you have on display or anything me personally i am a fan of app sales and coupons um you know i realize that especially some of the older generations don't necessarily have that or deal with it um my husband does not like dealing with it but um, as Scary talked about before, my husband was a big fan of the, uh, 
gas station deals where you would get like a free coffee or they would give you a free snack or something like that. Like that's the only app he can get on board with, but he loved those. Um, me personally, like I don't want to deal with a paper coupon. I don't want to deal with reading the fine print that you have to buy three to get your fifth free um, or anything like that. Like, just tell me, okay, this is the price that I'm going to pay. I know that either it's acceptable to me or it's not. And then on the flip side, as an employee, I don't like being in a situation where you have to say, yeah, it says buy one, get one half off. Not every single one's half off. So yeah, that's why it's not ringing up the way you want it to. Yeah. You can talk to my manager. Yeah. She'll walk with you and see the sign. Hey, look, the sign said what I said. Oh yeah. We'll still give you the sale that you wanted. Yeah, all that is BS to me. <laughs> but could you imagine all the expired coupons that you would get? I was just going to well, say I'm that. Well, I'm saying if, if you don't <laughs> if you don't accept coupons, if It'd you just terrible. accept the if you just accept the phone app, then either it's there or it's not the end. I've gotten so many expired coupons yeah. over the years. It's crazy. And Mad Dog, how you feel? Um, I I have to look back at the JC Penney fiasco. When the new C when that CEO from Disney took over and tried to go to everyday low pricing and got rid of coupons and what a disaster that was for the company because people want to believe that they're getting a deal. Regardless if after the coupon it's the same price as it was at regular price, they don't feel like they're getting a deal. You know, so when somebody comes up to my register, I'm like, Oh, have you signed up? You can save twenty percent off one one item today. You know. Oh, I can. They feel special. I can't do that ever. I can't. I could not do the everyday low pricing or you know, whatever because people do not like that cut and dry. They don't. And if and if we're going to get back to this customer oriented and and be successful in retail again, we we've, we've got to in that way cater to the customer. Okay. And then the last question, unless we get any more from the chat, um, planograms and hard sets versus uh, in-store merchandising. Do you think it's best to have a set layout of this is how it's going to look in your store versus being able to have people judge what will and won't sell in their store? Mad Dog, your turn. I'm free balling it. I don't want a planogram. <laughs> okay. Do not want a planogram because when, when you have a planogram and you go into, like you go into Walmart and you go into gas stations and if that item is not there, then you just have a hole. That's it. Yep. You know, I know my clientele where I work. I know the people in the area. I know what sells to them. So when I change out my front end, because I do have that creative license and that freedom, I sell my stuff. You know, so I, I don't want that that hard and fast, but that's that comes with time and that comes with experience. Um, yeah, not everybody is very good at merchandising. That's nope. and, and it's a hard that's thing to the teach. Truth. Like either but, they see it and understand it or they don't. <laughs> but if you can, if you like I, I do all my little frill, frill, you know, little displays and my end caps and things like that. But if you can teach, pull it to the front of the shelf mm -hmm. and put like items together. You put hand soap with hand soap. You put dish soap with dish soap. Like that's really when, when you have a freelance merchandising like that, that's really all you need. Put like items together and then make sure that everything's pulled to the front. The rest, I can, I can frou frou it up all day. That's not a big deal. And then you can actually let people express themselves creatively like that as well. So a lot of times that can be easier because people get frustrated with planograms because they don't have what it's supposed to have. And I don't like it because it looks holy and we're missing things. So no, I, I want it to just look full and nice and neat and like you just cut the aisle in half. So. Um, me personally, I think that it would be good to have planograms like through your aisles. 
but have the ability once stuff sells down to fill in, but then have people merchandise the end displays, like your end caps, because that way, you know, if you have a bunch of stuff that you know is going to sell really well or really quick, you can put that out. Um, I think the problem with that is, like I've seen before, if you have a manager that doesn't do the follow-up like they should, um, or you have end caps on back aisles, they kind of tend to get overlooked and then turn into a big old mess. Whereas if you have a set thing, you know. Now, the first job that I ever had, um, everything was planogrammed to the point where if you had an item that you needed to go put back and you didn't know where it was, you could scan it with the scan gun and it would tell you aisle 10, section A, peg 9. Like, it told you exactly where to go with it. And since, well, but, since it was see, a craft now, store with a lot of tiny I'm items, sure. that was helpful. But that's the only... That's the only scenario I've ever been in where that would be useful, like micro planning it that much. Like I see what because you're saying, I'm, Mad Dog, about being wanting to be able to fill in. Right, because you know when you're when you're struggling right now and over the last year to even get product in your building, and you're not allowed to make adjustments because that's not where it goes and that's not what it's supposed to be, and then you look like you're going out of business, right? <laughs> because you all of these empty places. Velvicans, what do you think? I feel like it could be crappy either way. I mean, <laughs> um, it could be okay, but seeing as you, a lot of things are out of stock now, they don't have enough laborers to get everything in the store or from on trucks or whatever, so I could see how that could be difficult to fill holes with things that you don't have. Yeah. So, I get that. Maiden? Yeah, so I I would have to say that I do like the idea of planograms because, like you said, some people are not very good at merchandising, and it's easier to just say, okay, so this set is going to have this, 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 and that in there. But there need if it were my company, there would be wiggle room in there. Okay, you don't have this. Okay, well then you fill it in with something else that you know is going to sell. But having rigid planograms where you can't change anything on it, I don't think is beneficial to the store, the employees, the customers, because you're left with holes and then everything just looks like shit. But again, some people aren't good at just saying, oh, this looks nice. I'm going to do this because not everybody is good at that and they make like you know dumpster fires of displays <laughs> so I mean so yeah like I think that there should be some type of structure around it I wouldn't say rigid but there's got to be something and then yes you have that room and that freedom to fill things in and merchandise how you feel necessary and things that are going to sell in your store okay real quick last question seven minutes um What's worse, old employees with bad habits or new employees with no experience? Go ahead, Maiden. Old employees with bad habits. Because <laughs> in my experience, they are some of the worst people to deal with. Um, they're the ones that are going to try to go over your head and call your DM or your regional manager and make a big fucking stink about something so stupid. And yeah, you might, you, you definitely have people that come on board that are not going to be good associates, but the ones that are so set in their ways that will not listen to reason will not adapt to change. Those are the most difficult people in my opinion to deal with. I agree. Um, it's hard. Well, really both. Um, the people that are old employees with bad habits that don't want to learn new ways, very frustrating, especially when they think they know better because they're older than you. But then if you have new oh, yeah. employees with no experience that don't want to learn anything. So really the, the worst employee is the employee that doesn't want to learn how to be a good employee. 
basically no yeah. and that's absolutely right that's it doesn't matter how long you've been there or how new you are if you can't get on board with how things are running now then I mean here's the door you know I'll hold it open for you and kick you on the ass on the way out Velvicans, what do you think I agree with all of that because it makes sense it's just you could just hire on a good worker you could have a worker who's great but also has bad habits but then you could also hire someone who leans on countertops all day no offense to anyone but if they lean on countertops all day and you know that someone's gonna get mad about it why would you do it i just don't understand it like and like i don't get that like you don't need to lean like maybe sometimes occasionally but while you're doing something like if you're pricing something i do that i think i think research needs to be done about um countertops and (laughs) registers that fly away apparently it's a apparently it's a bad thing a bad problem registers and countertops will just up and levitate apparently seriously you just gotta lean on them all day (laughs) mad dog do you have levitating countertops (laughs) mad dog i'm sorry i don't know how to work my phone oh okay Um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's been a, it's been an issue, and I thought we had them nailed down to the to the floor, mm-hmm. but apparently we did not. Those registers are but, light; they won't hold them down. They're levitating. They won't. Mm-mm. But I, I think for me, and I guess this is kind of drawing on the situation that I've been in, you know, with where I'm currently at. I mean, I literally not that long ago finally got rid of the last person that was under the old regime. Yeah, because they're so set. Well, that's not how it used to be done. Fantastic, but now this is how it's done, and the company is changing. Yeah, you know, I came. I came in at a good time with this company because the company was going in a new direction, and it was more in line with what I was accustomed to. So it made it easier for me because what I was doing was what they wanted, but. When you have those ones that are just so stuck, well, that's not how it used to be. Guess what? Don't care. (laughs) Don't care. Don't care if the old manager didn't care if the freight got out of the back. I do. Because I can't make any money if it's in the back. Don't care if the old manager dealt drugs out of the back room. I'm not doing that. Nobody's going to do that. Can't get over it. We'll promote you to customer. Agreed. Okay. Thank you, ladies, <laughs> for allowing me to ask the questions and discuss the questions with you and take over. Um, Mr. Scary, if you're out there, I guess we will relinquish control back to you. You ladies killed it. Fantastic. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for all the participation. Uh, Maiden, Mad Dog, always a pleasure having you guys on. Always a pleasure being on. Yeah. Thank you. Always have fun. Oh, yeah. So, uh, like I said, next week, no streams. The week after that, there'll be a Misfit Monday as long as Alex doesn't get killed on vacation. Uh, Knock on wood. Um, And a new war zone following that. Everybody have a great evening, and we will see you next time, guys.